Okay, so the the uh, sample I used in our practice one um, in experiment nine uh, was two naphthol, and just looking at the structure, you can see seven aromatic protons um, attached to the ring, and uh, one aromatic for uh, for the alcohol, and. Um, so now we can look at, when we look at the NMR, we'll be looking for seven aromatics, and then one phenolic proton. So now we'll look at the spectra. All right, All right. so there are a couple different ways, different types of spectra that you might be shown. Um, when you need to measure the integration for a signal, um, if it's given to you like this, um, you would take your ruler and you would measure the distance. You can see this little stair step, squiggly line. You would measure that with your ruler and you would do that for each um, little stair step. So that one, that one, that one, that one, and then you've got one. Uh, way down here that you can't see very well uh, yeah right there um, and if you uh, compare the measurements for each stair step you'll see that these are this one and this one are double the distance of this of these other ones um, and that just means that the ratio of protons for this signal means this co this signal corresponds to two protons while this signal here corresponds to one um, and if you add these up it, in the aromatic region we have two three four five seven aromatic protons for all of this uh, section here and then over here you have one and this is for the um, the OH um, the alcohol proton. Um, so that gives us the total amount of protons. And you may also see a spectrum given to you kind of like this, where instead of having to measure with your ruler, the integration may be down at the bottom for you. Um, so here, this signal amounts to two, three, four, five, six, seven aromatics and uh, if you see one here it's 7.27 that's always just the solvent that the sample is is run in so you would ignore that and then um, yeah. down here at five you've got another one that integrates to about one and these don't always integrate aren't whole numbers they're all but they should be pretty close to whole number ratios like this okay and um, regarding splitting or you might hear multiplicity um, when talking about these signals um, some of them are easy to tell like um, like this is would be a doublet where you've got um, two kind of equal intensity signals um, We'll talk about why this splits in a minute. So that would be a, a doublet. So that signal would be a 1H doublet. And then over here, we're going to call that a 1H triplet. Um, it gets more complicated than just saying doublet triplet, but for this class, you would just call that a triplet where it's equal distance from here to here, and then equal distance from this middle one to that one. And that would also be a 1H triplet, 1-1, one, one, or equal distance here, and then same to here. And that would be a doublet, and that would be, uh, we're going to call that a doublet. And then your OH signal would be, that's just a singlet. And... This signal right here, it looks like it's probably two doublets that are overlapping. Um, so we can just call that a multiplet when it's not totally clear to you. So of your...
So of your seven aromatics that you should have, ah, drag that over. All right, so you should have a 2H multiplet, 1H doublet, 1H triplet, 1H triplet, 1H doublet, and 1H doublet, and then that one we had down here um, was just a, a 1H singlet. Um, the first seven, you would call them aromatic. The, uh, the other one you would have as a, um, you could just put OH afterward. So the way we would write this, so the way you would actually write out that um, spectrum would be where your where your first signal on the left starts, so 7.79, and that's uh, two protons, and you can put M for multiplet, I'm just saying it's an aromatic proton. On to the next one, right here, one proton, double it, aromatic. Next signal, 1H triplet aromatic. Next signal, 1H triplet aromatic. Next signal, 1H doublet aromatic. And last aromatic uh, signal, 1H doublet aromatic. And, um, and then finally for the alcohol, 4.92, 1H, and then S for singlet, and you can just put OH there to notate it. And you can kind of predict uh, the splitting on some of these. It gets complicated, but um, like the signal for this proton, uh, you look at how many protons are on the neighboring carbon. So um, attached to this one, you've got one proton, and attached to this one, you don't have one. So um, however many neighbors, however many protons the neighbor has, you add one to it. So one neighbor plus one would mean this signal, you should see a doublet. Um, and for example, this one, it's got one proton on this side, one proton on that side. So two plus one, that means this signal should be a triplet. This one has two neighbors, so that should be a triplet. One neighbor, so it should be a doublet, and so on. And then of course your OH uh, has zero neighbors and that's why that's a singlet. Um, additionally, um, I won't explain it right now, but the OH signal, instead of, you won't always see a big sharp signal like that. It may be broad and drawn out like that. And that's just hydrogen bonding related. For carbon NMR, it can be a lot simpler. Um, if you look at your structure, you've got 10 total carbons and they are all aromatics. Um, so um, when I say simpler, I mean that uh, for the sake of this course, you won't see any splitting um, in a carbon NMR and you also, um, the integrations are for us, they're meaningless, um, so the, the height of the signal doesn't tell you anything. So for 10 carbons here, um, unless you have equivalent carbons, um, you should just see 10 signals here. And I'm not going to attempt to count those since they are, the uh, chemical shift is given here. So um, since we have these chemical shifts and we do have 10 signals for the 10 carbons, the way you would write it is just like so. You would just write out all of the signals you saw and you would just call them aromatics. Um, and then if you did happen to have any aliphatic ones, um, you would write those out and note them as aliphatic. Or if you had a key uh, carbon with the carbonyl on it, you could call it a ketone or aldehyde or, or just a carbonyl carbon. Um, so the carbon here with naphthol was pretty simple. For an IR spectrum of 2-naphthol, um, looking at an IR, you usually want to see what's on the structure first to see what you're looking for. Um, so you've got some SP2 carbons, um, or, or SP2CH stretches, I mean. 
Um, and if you look at a table, you'll see those should show up all around the uh, 3,000-ish um, region on the spectrum. And if you look at a spectrum of 2 naphthol, you'll see right there you've got a, a signal and your OH from the uh, phenolic portion um, that's usually above uh, above 3200 or so um, and if you look at the spectrum uh, here at 3700 um, you see a big sharp signal for the OH stretch and um, usually when you see it it'll be a lot broader than that um, that can be concentration related um, a lot of times and then you've also got CC aromatic stretches um, for um, the rings here and those are usually um, kind of through 1400 to 1550 something like that or 1650 um, and you do see some signals there um, getting further to the right you're getting into the fingerprint region and that's usually not uh, very informative so uh, you can for most cases just ignore that so for the the IR of 2 naphthol uh, the only really valuable signals you would you would say 3700 um, OH stretch 3100 sp2 ch stretch and then you could say just estimate 1500 to 1650 and that would be aromatic c double bond c stretch uh, written out like something like this and that would be good enough for me so that that gives us an example of how to write out proton and uh, carbon nmr and our ir spectra that's how you would report it in your post lab. You usually have one question on the post lab that says um, to get, uh, report any relevant data. Um, it, it's kind of a vague question, but um, you just put all of your spectral, spectral data into that field.